You need a shot timer because that which gets measured gets worked on. The Range Tech Timer is the official timer of active self-protection because it is versatile, reliable, feature-rich, and very economical. Check out all it can do at the link below. Hey everybody, welcome back to Suck Less Saturday. I am Neil, who you know, I hope. Uh, I am here with somebody that is a good friend of mine and, and we're taking a class out at, where are we at? Joe Foss shooting range. I didn't know there was such a thing, but it's kind of a cool range. But uh, you can see I got my jacket on. It is cold in Phoenix this week. But hey guys, I want to introduce you to my good friend, Matt Hot. Matt is a shotgun like wizard guy. He's He keeps telling me he's gonna teach me this stuff, but we've never had the timing or the schedule to be able to do it. So thanks for coming and doing this with me. I'm really excited. Glad to, Neil. So my, everybody that knows me knows my favorite gun is the shotgun, but I am big and strong enough of stature to be able to do, you know, just to pull that thing in and shoot it. Uh, Matt teaches the push-pull, which John knows how to do. I haven't figured it out yet, so I'm going to travel out here and take a class at some point. But we're not here to talk about that today. you got some stuff to do. So before you tell everybody what we want to talk about, tell, tell them what you're, who, do you who do you train with, what's your company name, all that fun stuff. Pimp so, yourself, uh, man. <laughs> Our company is called Simtac Consulting, S-Y-M-T-A-C. Uh, it's something that my dad started many years ago, and now I'm kind of apprenticed to him uh, teaching the gospel of the gauge. Gospel of the Gauge. You see that on the channel from time to time with John too. So yep. that is awesome, man. And this guy is super humble. He knows his stuff. Um, and I, I've never met your dad. Did you know that? No. No, we've never. I've never got to meet we'll your have dad. To fix but that. yeah. Um, and everybody speaks super highly of your dad, but I've never got to meet him. So, uh, but from my perspective, you're the genius here and the expert. When I have a shotgun question, I call him. I don't know how many times I've been walking around. Uh, Cabela's, Sportsman's Warehouse, Shields, all the places in my neighborhood. And I'm, I pick up the phone, I'm like, hey, Matt, what do you think of this gun? And <laughs> most of the time I go home without the gun, if that tells you anything. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so Matt, what are we going to talk about today? So we're going to talk about emergency reloads. Um, the shotgun has a couple of, of major limitations, one of which is, is overall range. It's not a rifle. It's not intended to be. The other is ammunition capacity. They don't hold a lot. You know, this gun here holds five rounds in a magazine tube and one in the chamber. So that's six shots. It doesn't sound like a lot until you realize, you know, kind of going with Tom Given's concept of serving size, one round of double lot buck is equivalent to a whole lot of bullets. Yeah, right. Uh, so, but the, the, end of the end result is a gun may go dry in the middle of a fight and how do you get it back up and running as fast as possible yeah. we're going to show you what we call the emergency reload right on right on so what gun do you have here matt this is mbogo this is my custom van comp built 870 uh, short barreled shotgun uh, with a set of sights that i developed uh, came up with a concept took it up to vang and said hey can you do this i said yeah but it'll probably work better this way and they came up with a better implementation than, than my initial thought. Uh, and they made these, these great sights for me. So cool. it's a big wide open U-notch. Uh, it's an excess regular dot. And then I've got a little flip up notch here that's tighter. Oh, nice. Zeroed for my preferred slugs at 50 yards. Cool, cool. All so, right, well show us the reload. So first off is context. Uh, how you do an emergency reload is going to depend on how you've got your gun set up, what type of gun. So on this particular gun, I don't have an optic on top of the receiver, um, and I don't have to deal with a bolt release button below the ejection port like you would on, say, a 1301 or a Benelli or something like that. Sure. So for me, for this gun, my preferred method is what we call an over-the-top reload. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is come back to my side saddle. See, I've got dummy shells. Yep. Um, and I'm going to come back to this first round. So we get a click. Oh, shit. Come back, open the port. I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to kind of hook it under the rim. Oh, and yeah. with my pinky, I kind of push it up, pull it up. No, I screwed that up. <laughs> The way you want to end up is like this, with the shell pinched between your index and your pinky fingers in the correct orientation. For an over-the-top reload, you're going to want the brass against your index finger and the crimp against your pinky finger. So I'm going to come up, come that shell over here, just drop it in the port, reacquire my firing grip, drive it forward. Now I can engage the target again. I've got another serving in the gun. Nice. If you have time later, you can backload the tube, but this is the quickest way to get the gun 
back into action. You can do a lot to end a fight with one round of buckshot. Right. Yep. So, again, the way we're going to do this is click, gun's empty. Ah, crap. Come back, hook that, come up here, right into the port, and go. Now, to be clear on this, you don't need to try to insert the shell into the chamber. There's no need for that level yeah, of manual the gun dexterity. Will do that for you. Yeah, the yeah. gun's designed to take a shell that's laying on that on that lifter and just shove it in there. So as long as you can come in, dump it in there, run the action forward, you're back in the fight. Nice. Now, if you are running a gun with an optic over the receiver, or especially a gun with a charging handle, semi-auto with a charging handle and a bolt release under the chamber, it can be awkward or difficult to go over the top. You, know, you have to come over that optic, it, it's hard to get indexed mm, on it, yep. and if you come down here and hit that button, your fingers are right in the path of the charging handle, and you know it kind of hurts, but more importantly, gun don't load right, yep. causes a malfunction. end up all the way into battery. Yeah, and that's, that's no bueno. I mean, this is an emergency reload for a reason. So for those guns, we're going to do what we call a, a beneath emergency reload or under the receiver. So here I've got the first shell brass down. And there, there's a whole history of side saddle designs and manufacturers that dictated a lot of this brass up stuff. We have good side saddles now, like this Vang side saddle or the Arita side saddle mm -hmm. that grip the shells well enough that you can run them brass down without leaving a trail of, you yeah. know, Hansel and Gretel shotgun shell breadcrumbs uh, you know, all over I, the place. I remember being a, a kid in South Dakota when you take pheasant hunters out, the guys that had those, yeah, they were always leaving shells all the way through oh, yeah. the field because they didn't hold on to them. So. Yeah. You know, the, the LAPD guys in the in the Rodney King riots back in the day when they had the old uh, the old Pack star side saddles, when those wore out and loosened up, if they were running brass down, all that running, 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 shooting, <laughs> running, you know, they just bloop, and now you got no ammo in your side saddle. Yep, and that's a bad trouble. thing. But all right. we don't have those issues with modern side saddles. So all right, so can you show us one with the brass down or underneath? Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna be kind of the same concept but in reverse. I come down, I give it a little push with my thumb, I hook it with my ring finger, pull it down. Now I've got it. The same thing, same pinch thing between pinch between ring finger or ring finger, pinky <laughs> finger and index finger. Yep. But it's in the opposite direction, and you just come underneath of it, drop it in there, reacquire firing grip, run the moving parts forward. If you're running a semi, you drop it in there, you hit the button to close the action, and go back to your firing grip, and you're right there. Um, is there a better one? I tend to think it's all contextual. You know, what have you trained with? What's your gun set up for? I have long trained over the top uh, for various reasons. Yep. So I tend to default to that. But if I'm going to run a 1301, I'll run that brass down simply for that reason. All right. Well, cool. Well, okay, so folks, so for this week's assignment, for you, long, uh, for you shotgun shooters, uh, the first thing, can I see that dumb, one of them dummy rounds, do you mind? Get yourself a dummy round. Now you can order this kind of stuff online. You can take a spent shell and do a little goofing around with it and cut it, fill it with wax. There's a lot of different ways you can make dummy shells. Don't do this with live shells in your house. If you do them with live shells, do it outside at a range. We're at a range here. Do it somewhere where you've got a safe backstop. But I would recommend you practice with a dummy round with some empties. Um, yep. and, and I mean, you can go redneck like me. I would just take a, a Sharpie or a, a exacto knife and cut that off and just get the feel for it in my hands this way so I can get that understanding. Um, these are actually kind of nice. Yeah, right? these, <laughs> but, so I yeah. like these because they're very visible. That orange is very clearly a dummy and they've got a very clearly dummy orange mm, primer. Yep. The downside is they're they're exceedingly light. You don't get the feel right. of a proper weight buckshot shell. Yep. Um, and when you're doing these manipulations, the proper weight is important. Doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. I took Tom Givens' class this summer on uh, shotgun, and I did notice that when I tried to do a little bit of practice with dummy shells, it is completely different. It gave me a good chance and a a, a feel to get the sense of where everything needs to be. But you really got to have something with the right weight to yep. really practice. And quick. and. Quite honestly, Neil, the problem I found is nobody makes a perfect dummy shell. Um, you can get the ones that have lead shot but no powder in them, mm -hmm. but 
they're generally a clear hull with, with a printed dummy on the side that wears off pretty quick. And then how do you tell that from a live shell? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you've got these that are very clearly visibly different, but they don't have the right weight. Um, so I think one of these days what I might do is just epoxy some shot down inside there. To get the weight, yeah. To get the weight. You know, there, there's just things I'm experimenting with and other people are experimenting with. I'd love to see... Uh, the perfect dummy shell that's both very, very visibly different than a live shell and has the weight. Cool. All right, so before we go, can you show us one at speed? <laughs> we'll give it a try. Cold out here. It is chilly. All right, so. It's Arizona, why would you not be cold? Right, because it's December. <laughs> so here, click, ah, crap. And I fumbled that a little bit. So we'll try it again. What that was that? a little better. That was, yeah. That was a little better. Even though I used my index finger for that one, I really should use the social finger. Right. But. <laughs> All right, folks. So for this week, get yourself some sort of dummy. If you're a shotgun person, now not everybody's a shotgun person. I, I like. But I said, you should be. This guy says he should be. I love the shotgun for home defense. Um, we can talk all about all the right kind of shot and everything, but if you're not using, what, double out buck, right? Yes? Uh, Just double simple. out, number one. There you go. If you're using birdshot for home defense, you're wrong. That much we'll all, we'll all agree on. Buckshot's the way to go for home defense. And you need to pattern your gun. There's a whole ton of stuff. Um, and I feel like we should do a whole series on the shotgun. We ought to. Next time I come to Phoenix, me and Matt are going to get together. We're going to do a whole series on that. But, but for now, practice just the emergency reload. Spend a little bit of time this week with your shotgun. We spend a lot of time with the pistol. We do a lot of other stuff. Don't spend enough time on the shotgun, and it's a wonderful gun. It's a lot of fun for home defense. Thanks for doing this with me, bro. Hey, thanks for having me, Neil. All right, take care. You, too. you guys, see you next week, and suck less.